Hello there, my name is Corey, and I am a Star War. And my name is also Corey, and I am a Star War. And my name is Jim, <laughs> and I am a Star War. <laughs> and we are a Star War. Uh, first things Ding. first, let me go ahead and say uh, I, I'm sorry to my fellow podcast co-hosts, uh, because... We had um, a pretty epic recording session about a month and a half ago, and I lost all three episodes <laughs> that were recorded somehow. Uh, not sure if I just put them on a, somewhere in a hard drive where I lost them, which doesn't seem right because I'm very organized in my folders, but I think I just formatted the card without dumping them, which is very possible. Uh, so How we, dare you? We are re-recording. At least two of those episodes because we don't remember what the third one was. It's about. probably it's probably a good reason. It's, it's probably good. for the best. It's yeah. for the best. Um, but also, we are going to open real quick um, a couple, uh, three, in fact, uh, Star Wars Black Series figures that were sent to us by a friend of the show, Drew Kellogg. Shout out, Drew! Shout, Shout out, out, Drew! Drew. Uh, the first one is Quill from the Mandalorian. Sweet. Uh, I have spoken. Jimmy, you, you can like do that, that one. one. I like that one. I'm going to open it. Uh, Corey, you can do Emperor Palpatine. Uh, somehow. Somehow. There go Palpies. Somehow. And I'm going to open Princess Leia uh, Organa Bausch from Return of the Jedi. Oh, Bounty, Hunter awesome. yeah, Bounty, Bounty Hunter Leia. Bounty Hunter Leia. I like that one. We uh, appreciate Drew. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Drew. I'm going to knock my microphone over. Sorry. Y'all got to step up because we put out a challenge. Okay, it wasn't a challenge. We just said if y'all want to send us figures, we to were open, just begging for toys <laughs> that we would open. Them. And uh, Drew sent us some figures, and we're being very loud. Uh, and I, now I have, I have Leia open. This is a badass looking spoken. figure. This is a good looking figure. I mean, all of these are. He even looks like Nick Nolte. Yeah. Oh, look, the helmet. The helmet comes off. It's separate. This is wrinkled nutsack Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Very is. accurate. To it looks like he and Voldemort everywhere. shop at the same cloak mm. store. Look at that mm. It's badass. The helmet fits on there very snugly. Um,. Yeah, hell yeah. That's avocado in the background squeaking her turkey. I'm going to open these other accessories in a little while. But yeah, thank you, Drew. That's awesome. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. We appreciate that. Um, so let's get into now. Um, one of the lost episodes was our recap and opinions on uh, the last two episodes of Ahsoka. So I went back last night and rewatched those two because it had been a hot minute since I've seen them uh, and wanted to have a little more recent viewing so <laughs> so I could have uh, at least a decent conversation about it I did not rewatch them so I am not prepared I rewatched them because I knew Hera was in it <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed yes she didn't disappoint is this is this the sex episode no no we should no, save that's that. coming save we're that gonna one. Yep. we'll talk more about it in a sex episode let's do that so recap episode seven. So episode four. seven was called Dreams and Madness, and I'm gonna written by Dave Filoni. I'm gonna read from Wikipedia here. Uh, it starts off on Coruscant with uh, Sindula. She's standing in front of the whatever subcommittee the of council. something something. Yeah, and she's getting in trouble. That's right. But then C3PO shows up, and he's like, Leia says it's cool. So then everything's cool. Right? That was it, fun. That was fun. It was fun. It was a nice way to answer the, what, what is Leia doing? Why isn't she on the show? Right, right. So, I love that. Just bailing people out. Yeah. Um, meanwhile. Um, Pulling rank. Ahsoka is on the inside of a space whale flying across the world, galaxy. As you do. Yeah. Into and, a different galaxy. And she lands in the bad galaxy and... Um, we had already met Ezra in the last episode. That's all together. And they're trying to figure out how to, uh, Thrawn is trying to figure out how to get off the planet. That's He's right. like, let's leave. He's got something going on with the, the witches. Something on, it seems to me like he would be ready. 
And but they t- it, he just sits around for hours and he's like, I better not let those Jedi get up here. <laughs> I hope they don't climb the ladder I've left to my spaceship and catch me. Right. Like he just chills. Why doesn't he just get up and go? He has to send his reanimated fart soldiers <laughs> to fight them on the ground. Just take off. I don't know. I feel like he'd be ready. They were go. loading something that wasn't on the ship. Right? Were they? Because they make a big deal out of that at the end of one episode. I don't remember which one it is. Like, there was progress of something that had to be complete, and it's whatever is in his cargo uh, hold that the witches are loading into. They do have a shot of that at the very end, and it looks like a bunch of coffins. So so I guess he has, like, a zombie army. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to this. They, uh, They fight with the... He sends a, the Thrawn sends people down to the surface to fight with them, and Hottie is fighting with them. Right around the uh, this is where we are with the the turtle people. But we've already seen them in the last. We episode. saw them. That's right. But now we see that the huts they live in are actually hover tanks. Oh yeah, that's which right. is strange to me. Well, because they're hermit crabs. Yeah, so it's like get- a little guy in a shell wearing a shell drives a shell and is in a shell. <laughs> but his shell That's meta as fuck. Is like a is like pretty impressive technology for like a crab man who lives on a desolate planet without trees. So I'll try not to do this um because I don't want to belabor the fact that Corey deleted the original recording of this, but <laughs> yeah, I do remember my- us talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lot of um conversation about what that planet was and what it used to be. Yeah. And that there, there has to have been some technical archeological remnants of whatever civilization there was before. Cause again, how the hell would these guys be right. building their own little yeah. machines and repairing the star destroyer and that yeah, sort of like thing. Like where do they get gas for those things? <laughs> I have to the worry. whale dung that the falls fuel. from the atmosphere. Oh, right? whales. Um, this is also where um, Balin Skull is like, hey, hottie, have a good time fighting bad people. I am going to Mordor. And then he just leaves. Right. <laughs> and we don't see him again until the very, very end. Um, Thrawn pulls his troops and... Then they're like, Hottie, come here. We can be your friend. And then Hottie just takes off running in the opposite direction. She was mad. That was the low-key funniest part of the whole series. <laughs> when she just like takes off running. Like not like force running, not like impressive running, just running. Yeah, she was just trying to get out. <laughs> it was funny to me. Uh, and then Ahsoka reunites finally with Sabine Wren and Ezra. And they're like, yay, we got to get out of here. But yay, we're here. Yeah, because Ezra thought Ahsoka was dead because Sabine thought Ahsoka was dead. Right. Yes. Last they saw her, she got knocked into the water and into and the other... I mean, Sabine world. never really had to come clean with Ezra that, you know, it was kind of her fault. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, ah, oh, thank God you're here. Whew. There goes my guilty conscience. <laughs> All better now. Yeah. She did almost kill Ahsoka that time. Right. Mm. Uh, so that's the end of that episode. That's seven. Yep. So thought, thoughts on that one, or do you want to read eight, and then we'll just talk about all of them together? Let's just go through eight and then yeah. discuss yeah. as a whole, because it all kind of runs together. We'll get this bit. part over with quickly, because we know you guys have probably watched it, too. But they didn't watch it. That was months ago, too. <laughs> that was. Yeah. They don't remember. <laughs> so we're here to help. Yeah, That's right. I'm, I'm the audience's voice in this episode. Then. <laughs> so part eight is the Jedi, the Witch, and the Warlord in the wardrobe. Yes, this one, like all the action, is in this one episode. So it opens up with them turning the not mother into a mother, right? And <laughs> so they're like, "You are now a mother, and you get a green sword that's on fire." As you do. Congratulations. We have try not to burn your hilt. Conjured it from midair and is for you now. Uh, and then there's like fighter attacks. And so Ahsoka and Bridger like are knocked down and the, other, the ship has to go fly away. Like uh, Huang Wang has to fly the <laughs> ship away. Yeah. Couldn't be there for a minute. He was chasing. I don't know. Um, I was then, going to get fuel for yeah. the hermit crabs. And basically they get 
to like the foot of the temple that the is the star, star destroyer, destroyer is, is it still parked currently on it? Yeah. humping yeah and they have it's to, docked they have to get to the top he's about to take off but he can't yet they don't know where the keys are they're <laughs> kind of sitting around right the engine's cold like it's got to get primed <laughs> yeah it's like trying to start a shitty lawnmower yeah right yeah and they're like dude we don't flood it how long have they been there years have they been sitting there for years i think we decided it was 10 years I yeah. thought it was 45 yeah, years because right. I thought Ezra looked 45. Yeah, yeah, it's been eight to 10 years, I think, right? Yeah. That sounds right. So it's going to take a little you know, while. Because their to... years, I'm sorry, their cycles are exactly as long as our years. Of course. All over the, all galaxies. All galaxies. Uh, so then they get to the ship and um, night soldiers, night troopers, night mothers, a lot night of moon. Night moon. <laughs> uh, people get killed and then they just stand back up and everybody's like, what? And that was kind of like, cool. What? What's going on? I liked it. And that's when it becomes clear to us. That's why that one guy that one, turned out to be a fart in a bag. Yeah. Because he was just a reanimated. That was a neat trick. Nightman. I'll try spinning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. We'll save that for later. Save that. Uh, so then... She throws Ezra up on the ship because it's finally starting to take off. Mm -hmm. And then she's supposed to She's got her force mojo at that point. Yeah. Which was a big deal. So she throws him up there and he's supposed to pull her back. And then she's like, no, never mind. And she turns around and goes back to Ahsoka, who's still fighting with Lisbeth with the green sword. Lisbeth uses her green flame sword to bust up one of Ahsoka's sabers. sabers. Her small one. So then Ahsoka... Kills her and takes her sword. She's like, I have to have two swords no yeah, matter I what. Can't, I can't move forward without... I can't be one-sworded. Right. Need two swords. So she kills Elizabeth. Thing takes off. And Elizabeth was like, wasn't she like, you didn't have to kill me. Like, you could borrow it. Like, <laughs> yeah. You could borrow it sometimes. Yeah. You didn't have to run me through with it. There's only like 20 of us on this planet right now. Let's right. talk about this. Right. There's three swords. You're going to be here us. for a while. I can tell you where the fuel is. Yeah. Um, I did write down... At the end, like where this show leaves us. So at the very end, we have Ahsoka and Sabine are stuck with the turtle people. They go back to them and they're like, we live here now. Hi, turtle men. Yeah, their ship is fucked. Mm -hmm. And the turtle men are like, oh, cool. Is it? Well, their ship works, but they're, uh, they can't. Right. They don't, they they can't can't make make that jump. jump. And the whales have moved on. The whales are mad To a different spawning ground. They got shot at. Um, Hottie goes and joins the red people. Right, the bandits. And she says, hello, everyone. I have a sword. And they're like, I guess you're our leader. (laughs) And then Balin is standing on a giant statue looking at Mordor. Looking at Mordor. There's no way to interpret that any other way. He's just left the franchise and he is now searching for the ring. He is the Lord of the Ring. He is the Lord of the Rings. He is now the Lord of the Rings. He is the Lord in the Lord of the Rings, he is. It's Lord Balin. Balin. Lord, Lord Balin. Balin. See, it's right there in his title. So we, we, we did go through all that last time. Like the statue was from uh, an episode of, was it Rebels? It was Rebels. Yeah. Rebels. Yeah. Um, what, what so it it's like, it's the, like pointing it to like the original temple of something, right? Like the Jedi temples, right? Am I, am I crazy? Well, I thought we saw the original Jedi temple where Luke was. Yeah. The, and that's in a different galaxy. I like, I think this, this is, is like the, some, the origin of some other thing. Well, and uh, some uh, deeper force. So my thing. question is, and again, I'm have, I'm a nerd, but I'm not that deep into it. Um, is the magic wielded by the witches of death, Amir, and you know, this group on, on this planet Mm-hmm. Is that magic, the force wielded differently, or is it something else? Fantastic well, they they question. call they call it. Honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. The witches called it magics, which makes me think it's something different. Unless they just call it something different, but you would think they would have alluded to that in some way. And does it have anything to do with midichlorians? <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. not. <laughs> they have. Deuterians. There you go. <laughs> which exists different... alongside of the midichlorians. Right. It's like antimatter and matter. Some people have just one or the other. Some people are all doo-doo. Some people are left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. So getting back to it, 
whatever that thing is that's that Balin is going after is likely old magic and or old force power, maybe something. I don't know. He, he didn't he allude to like wanting to start over with the like the Jedi, like tearing it all down. Right, because right, he's he never for the reset button. Yeah, because he's like, never really like a Sith. He's never like he's he orange, like not hard, red. Yeah, right. a hired mercenary. Right. Right. Yeah, that was kind of the what I thought was. But he, he is like, ex Jedi. Yes, he's like because he was. Yeah, he was ex Jedi. He was like, well, they started doing some shit I didn't agree with, so he was like, I'm gonna do my own shit. So it, I, I thought he alluded to that happened to point. a lot of Jedi. By the way, turns out. Turns out a lot of Jedi Turns out that grow up to resent the institution that they work for. Swing a dead cat in this galaxy without hitting not somebody. Hit a pissed off was like, Jedi. well, I actually was a Jedi. So right. like he and Ahsoka many years. should probably team up, right? And yeah. go on some madcap zany adventures. I mean, there's only like five of them on that planet with the red people and the turtle people. They originally said it was only going to be one series, Ahsoka, and then there's been a lot of speculation lately about a possible season two. Because if they don't, are they going to tie all this stuff up in the movie that Dave Filoni is going to make? Well, they've yeah. got they've got a couple of other shows that they can use to dip in to what's going on over here, like they did on Boba, Boba Fett. Fett with Mando. You Mando know, season I mean, four. They've they've shown us already that they don't mind crossing characters into different shows, and and in the case of Boba Fett, giving two whole episodes <laughs> to yeah. a different character. Yeah, true. You well, might. that's on that planet. We end with all of the main characters over there. But then back in real world, Ezra shows up and we see Hera from behind again. Mm-hmm. And then um, Thrawn shows up on Darth the Mirror, mm-hmm. and he's ready to start his bullshit. He's like, I'm here, Empire. Woo. Cut like, to credits. I like the way Ezra showed up. That was very, very true to... To the character, I mean, wearing the, wearing an outfit of the enemy and like inviting I, I know, them to I know it didn't, shoot him I know in it the didn't head makes sense, but this is Star Wars. But it was a nice callback. That was fan service. They could have murdered him. They could have, and I would have been like, "Yeah, why are you wearing that mount, that mask, idiot?" He should have. Yeah, when the, the fucking gate went down or the ramp, just be like, "All right, I'm taking this mask off." Did he say? Yeah. That, did he say that it was Jabba the Hutt piloting the the ship? <laughs> like, is that a deleted I scene? I don't believe so. Right. Where he's like, hey, this is Jabba the Hutt. My security clearance code is like 420, Echo 469. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and also at the very end, Anakin is a forest ghost smiling happily. Right. Shadows in the starlight. Yeah. I thought that was nice. It was a nice send off for Anakin. Like, it was their way, I think, of saying, like, this is it for him. I just don't want a standalone series. I want a standalone movie. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. but Like I, a Dirty Dozen style. I know they did that with Rogue One, but I want to see, like, a secret mission from the Clone Wars that was never in the movie. And I want to see Hayden Christensen doing that. Sign me up. I feel like he's down. I'm down. He's having fun now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Ahsoka did get her closure, which was like the whole last scene in that show was it's time to move on. That's true. Excuse me. Speaking of moving on, what's next? So we settled on that the all of the that's fart fart zombies. Yeah, that's magics. So if this picks up and it shows the inside of his star destroyer is full of these look like coffins. So is his plan to? restart the empire is to show up with a army of fart zombies. I don't, I mean, I I think that's probably his fighting force to start with. Clearly he's got folks that are waiting for him to show up. You know, uh, uh, Elsbeth isn't here anymore, but you know, think of all of the, the warlord Imperials that were splintered and left over. You know, it's not going to take him very long to scare one or two of them with his, you know, zombie army. And now he's doubled his forces, you know? Yeah. Or is this where the first order starts? <clears throat> it has to eventually. Start at some point. <laughs> right. We're not that much before it. A few years. Yeah. And like Mon Mothra has been basically warned by Hera that like, hey, Thrawn's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heads up. Omar coming. 
Y'all ever watch The Wire? <laughs> yeah. Throng coming. <laughs> you hear that motherfucker whistle coming down the alley. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's mm, It could be... I mean, it could be the start of the First Order, but like, yeah, he took them all to Dathomir to like wake them up, basically, right? I, I'm thinking it's not the start of the First Order. I think, I think it's... The deal that he made with the witches that were in that other galaxy was that he could get them to a place where they could reestablish themselves. And he, I don't remember if he was involved in the the slaughter on Dathomir, the first go around, but he certainly would have knowledge of it. So he knows what happened to them. And mm-hmm. so he's, you know, that, that makes sense. That transaction makes sense that they would help him repair his ship and get his soldiers ready if he can get them to Dathomir. So he may just be fulfilling his end of the bargain with them. And now he's got like, there's no guarantee that it has to be that he's using a zombie army to retake the empire. Cause I really do think him just showing up and talking to a couple of, of those Imperial warlords, they're going to be like, all right, let's go. And now he's got all the force he needs there. I guess so. I guess there's, remnants all over who are like they had it better under the empire because they were gangsters in charge of their right right even earlier in the season of ahsoka right when earlier earlier. they were um there was a scene where they were like in the command station or something right and then dude is like for the empire and they have this whole oh yeah shootout right Mm -hmm. right well and then of course everything with mandalorian season three with moff gideon and all of the other Moff's meeting and you know the, uh, is wasn't Elsbeth in that oh, where she's yeah. like she's like hey Thrawn's coming yes. maybe not she may not have been in there but they were they, they were, were addressing his return yeah. and and several of them were like that's bogus he's not coming back because be they were here calling already. it conspiracies that's what old yeah. Senator Grouchy Face was talking about mm-hmm. and when he kept trying to shoot down Hera and Mon Mothra in that first Senate hearing yeah on Coruscant true earlier because he said time. they mentioned conspiracies with the moth with well he's a with gideon yeah interesting so i mean i'm assuming that whether it's a second season or in the movie we're going to find out what's in those containers and what his plan was it makes perfect sense for him to be the big bad in the movie because he has no presence in the sequels and they're not that far timeline wise so you know it could be that now we're speculating, but that's half the fun. It could be that he is like that the Republic does successfully participate in repelling Thrawn trying to take over, right? Right. And that them doing that is why they were complacent and not paying attention to the First Order and why they were caught off guard there. Like, I don't think we have to tie the First Order into Thrawn in order for it to make sense. Right. You right, Star Wars. There's a lot of dogs does, barking. Out does there. he does he know that while he was gone, the original trilogy happened, and the rebellion destroyed the empire? Like, is he he's caught up on all that, right? If not, he, he's going to be so bummed out. He's going to be pretty salt. He's got to know, right? Because I mean, remind remind me again. I mean, is he when, getting news on the other? galaxy that he's there's got to be i mean because clearly the 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 witches and this, the witches were dreaming and that's how elsbeth they, they found were, her right they had email so they can communicate <laughs> the magics somehow elsbeth at magics.net <laughs> hosted on geospace yeah so i guess he knows he's smart he knows it's a small how the hell but you know it's not the worst one it's not the worst one it's still a how the hell now what i want to know is back to the space whales they're big they can put <laughs> and there's more than one there's a lot of them we know that they live and die they're not immortal because we right. see their bodies floating around this planet the boneyard therefore they reproduce therefore they have genitals <laughs> so my question is if it was all whale absolutely we're looking at the biggest dongs oh yeah no in i mean the, in the star wars universe if they're whales that are at all like our whales yeah but the back half of them are squids and as far as i know squids don't have peckers. peckers at all they have beaks but no peckers 
What do you think, Corey? I had never really given much thought to space well, dick. <laughs> so let me ask you. don't you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, you know what? How does I the can, Sarlacc exactly make Sarlacc do. babies? Go outside, nerd. Never seen <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for your worthless chime ins. So if it's not the biggest wang because of the squid part is the part that does it. Right. What does have the biggest wang? So here's some here's some possibilities that uh, big like sand dragon crate dragon. Oh yeah, that thing's huge. That's there's some large old... underwater species in um, freaking what's the thing in Mandalore the. Oh yeah, the mud horn. The, no, the no. mythosaur. Mythosaur. That, mythosaur. That thing. That's huge. it. Mythosaur. That's the one. Is it bigger than the animal that was living inside the cave on the asteroid that the Millennial Falcon parked I that was, inside? I thought that was the asteroid's dong. Is that the dong with the mouth and yeah. teeth? It's scary. That's a scary dong. A lot of aliens have mouths and teeth on their dongs. You can thank H.R. Geiger for that. That's just a fact. We know that. <laughs> uh, you know. So um, does the mythosaur have the biggest dong? You think in the whole universe so. so far that we have seen? I think so. Side quest. It's not really a What's side bigger? quest. What's a how much time do you plan on devoting? <laughs> <laughs> we got we got nowhere to be. So in Solo, when they're flying through the whatever, oh yeah, no, there's, a giant, right. there's a giant. That thing is huge. Uh, Cthulhu looking thing inside the Kessel. <laughs> that thing is <laughs> gotta there's, have there's a big dog. dong, <laughs> right? But is it is it male? Right. It is probably it female. It or, probably just cuts it off like itself a like a starfish and makes. New ones. It's the other half of the whale. It's got a whale back end. Oh, shit. (laughs) It's got a squid front end and a whale back end. A big tail. Yep. And whale dong. There you go. And that's why it's mad. It's like, what do I do with this? (laughs) (laughs) I live inside this maelstrom. No one can visit me. I'm hungry all the time. (laughs) Y'all wild. All right. So um, smash that like button and comment down below. If you can think of a bigger dong, <laughs> please and thank you. Down there, just click, just click comment, and then you'll see the cursor. And then once the cursor is blinking, you can type. You're explaining the internet. To yeah. <laughs> There's only two people listening, and they are very old. So, what do y'all think? I mean, next steps after this, if they do, if they do another series, how do the hell, how the hell, do Ahsoka and Sabine get off of that? I can't see how they could just jump into a movie and be like, let's cover the whole Thrawn thing in two hours. That's why I'm thinking we're going to... Because they'd also have to work in how are they getting back and how are they whatever. It has to be a season. And if what Balin finds in Mordor is supposed to be this supreme, you know, raw original power that's capable of resetting everything... That's a big bad on top of Thrawn. That that's going to be too much juice. And that's also man. a huge problem because that man has passed away. Right. I mean, unfor- they got to re- if they want to finish that storyline, they got to recast yeah. him. I vote for Leif Schreiber. But that would be great. But you know, a second season could answer what he was after, how it can be stopped, and how they get home. Mm-hmm. And then you still have all of the Thrawn drama to play out with in the movie. Right. Cause I would like to see the, the Balin character. It, Ray Stevens was incredible. The character was also compelling and, and I'd like to see more from the character. Yeah. I'm for that. I, I hope they don't just walk Forget away from Mordor, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did, because that is not connected in my mind to anything else at all. So if that's the one thing that they had to drop, then I'd be like, yeah, one guy found something on Mordor once. Oh, well, and it killed him. Yeah. He's right. Fucking dead now. Or he's the just the character. most powerful badass on some other planet in another galaxy that we'll never see. Anyway, Balin skull died on the way back to his home planet. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Simpsons. Y'all. <laughs> Car- Carter uses that reference all the time about things. <laughs> He loves that shit. Um, That's a classic. 
Yeah, I I don't know how they don't do a second season. They could, like you said, put it in some other series, but I feel like that would be lessening it a little bit, probably. True, but I mean, those two Mando episodes were pretty damn juicy in Boba Fett. Boba Fett. But it made you want another Mando season. Right. It didn't make you say, oh, well, now I know what happened to him with Luke. So I don't need any more from that. True. True. It was also weird that they put that in there. It should have been part of Mando season. The Luke and all that shit. But whatever. I'm crazy. Nah, now you're just making sense. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the... Of all the series that are out, where does this one rank for you guys? The Star Wars series. Andor is still the best. For real. Andor. What's better than Andor? Andor is really good. I don't know. What have we had? Mando season one is uh, probably at the top for me because it's the most Star Wars. Because Andor, to me, is, succeeds in in being because it's not at all about the Jedi. Right. It's a whole other aspect of the universe that is fascinating. And, you know, all the political intrigue and all of that was incredible to watch. But as far as the best star Wars series, I think that first season of Mandalorian just nailed, nailed it. And I thought Ahsoka was, was, was good. was really, really, really good. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I think it's got probably one of the better episodes of any of the, Series. That's true. This is, this is, this is. That's true. All right. Episode five. Was it five? Episode five? Yep. Vanekin. Yeah. Yeah. That shit was good. I liked it. I would. Yeah. What would you say? What would you do? Well, I mean, I feel like that was like a hundred percent fan service. It was just like, here's what you want to see. You want to see Hayden in the Clone Wars, yada, yada. But it also. Like, but it was amazing. Moved mm-hmm. the story. Yeah. It furthered yeah. things. So it wasn't completely. I mean, it was fan service for sure but i mean they all kind of are <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you're right you're right um yeah i mean i think that we're probably close to wrapping this up unless y'all got final thoughts no nah, good sign mm-hmm. cool um well yeah y'all follow us if you don't already we are on instagram mostly and threads at we are a star war uh, follow us there. I signed up for threads too. I have no idea how I did it. <laughs> don't follow Jim on threads because uh-uh. he's not paying attention. Yeah. I don't know what um, it is. I'm going to try to start using the threads account a little more. Uh, follow us there. T- please tell your friends about us and, uh, list like us, uh, and review us or whatever. On- if you leave a review, you're telling your friends all around the world about us. There you go. That's where I was going. All around the world. Uh, Apple podcast reviews and Spotify reviews world. supposedly help us get more world. eyeballs. Uh, into other people's feeds and such. Hmm. And our t-shirts are still up. I thought they were, we got another notice that they were being taken down from T public. It said for real this time, but they're still there because I ordered one uh, a couple nights ago. Finally. Oh really? I'm going to hmm. get some more. Yeah. There's, I there's, think we're the only ones that have ordered still, t-shirts. Probably so Jimmy has one or took a couple. Um, I ordered one. Um, Corey hasn't ordered one yet by that look on his face. He said Uh, he was going to make his own. Yeah, go to (laughs) tpublic.com. And uh, if you search for the Alabama Take, just find the Alabama Take store. And we're listed in there because I think uh, it was made intentionally so you can't search us. Yeah, if you do search for something called this has nothing to do with Star Wars, (laughs) then you'll see it. Yeah, (laughs) Uh, because we've been taken down once before, but it's still there. So, but we, so go but get we cautioned you before, unless it was in the deleted episode, don't search for butthole. Yeah, don't search for buttholes. Um, apparently, our logo has gone completely over several people's heads that our logo is three buttholes it's talking cerebral. about Star Wars. It is. Because that's what we yeah, are. It's cerebral. It's not supposed to smack you in the face. No. <laughs> it's just like a little light kiss. It just glides up against the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just gently, so gently wafts by. It doesn't hit you. <laughs> Well, I think that's it. That's yeah. a great place to end it. I think so. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks, we will, everyone. Uh, talk to y'all again soon. We are Star Wars.